Okay, here's the setup and I'm gonna attempt to film, show you how I pulled the air out of the whole system, or at least try to. <laughs> you, uh, you clamp this off, I use my little special method of clamping here, clamp it off. You're gonna pump air out of the reservoir. I've got the check valves, one-way valves in there, so I know that the uh, return hoses are all full of coolant. I already did that beforehand. That's really easy to do. It's just a reverse of this. <clears throat> You're going to pump air out of the reservoir. It's going to suck all the bubbles from the whole system. You're going to dump it into the top here. You're going to have a huge vacuum in here. And when you go to relieve that vacuum, you're just going to unplug this and it's going to dump. It's going to drain all that coolant back into there. So it's refilling this vacuum with uh, only coolant. And then as you're pumping the air out of the system, obviously it's just gonna dump into that tube and go to the atmosphere. And all of this, as always, was done on an incline. And I mean, I've got this thing probably a foot and a couple inches in the air. <laughs> so, sorry, it's gonna be shaky. <laughs> you see, as I'm pumping it out, that coolant level's rising up. All right, so let's just pump it all. I don't know if this is going to be a good angle or not, but as I pump out of the system, you can see how many bubbles are coming up. With a huge vacuum on the system, in order to reintroduce this coolant into the system without reintroducing air, you just uncork this little stopper here. There's a huge amount of pressure on that. It's trying to pull it closed, see? Might get a little foamy, but don't worry about it. It's just super high velocity coolant going by there. Now when it gets low enough, you don't want it to suck a bunch of air in, so you're just going to stop it back up once it gets low. You can see I still have, I just used up all that coolant that I pulled out. I have not added any or taken any out. This is just a system that's pulled so much vacuum. It needs more coolant in here to refill it to go back down to level. If I were to pull this stopper out and release all that vacuum, the whole reservoir would empty. Almost guaranteed. The cool thing about doing this method here is you can see that both the hoses on the heater core are being sucked in. This one's, this one's all flat too. This one's a little more stiff. But you can tell that it's getting to the heater core circuit as well on both sides. So this should be as little air as we possibly can have inside this heater core. Uh, and once we fill it up with coolant, it'll just, I mean, even if there is a bubble inside there, it'll just be really, really tiny. Got a huge amount of vacuum on the system. Like I said, this is just, I mean, it's just as flat as can be. There's, there's nothing. It's as thin as can possibly be. Now, phase two, <clears throat> if you want to be absolutely perfect, which is eh, neither here nor there, is you clamp off the turbo line and you clamp off that line. Now, you shouldn't need to because it has a check valve, but do it anyway. So you clamp off both those lines so that you just have the headline open. And that headline is connected to your transfer pump transfer pump is connected back to here just like normal because we need a, a way to refill the coolant that we pull out of the head coolant and the air but just coolant goes in there the air goes up obviously basic physics and then you cap off that return so that you can actually hold a vacuum and you can actually hear it uh cycling some air just a little bit of air from the head if i pump it I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear the check valve bouncing. And you can hear the air coming up out of here and being released in the atmosphere here. And you still have all the coolant that you've pulled out of the head with the air. So, clamp that, put it on there, release this back into the coolant reservoir, swap out your caps, 
make sure that it's level or should be below level refill it make sure it's level and then you're good i did take my car out after um, bleeding the system and it was probably two or three miles of um, pretty hard turns and some high revs and whatnot to fully bleed the system and i saw the temps they we're going kind of crazy for a little while up from you know 180 to 210 uh, pretty rapidly um, as it you know dropped probably the last of the bubbles out um, but it equalized pretty quickly uh, probably 15 minutes of just kind of driving around um, and then it's been you know pretty stable and steady ever since